So here's a problem about one of the trickier concepts, I think, in this section, the idea of whether an operation is well-defined. And uh, here's, here's the, what we're starting with. We're, we are looking at these definitions that we have in the section, which they don't really define a new operation, but they define a really elegant, beautiful way of thinking about addition and multiplication in modular arithmetic. They say, if I want to add an element of z mod n, to another element of z mod n. Well, how do we write elements of z mod n? We take an ordinary integer and we put a bar over it to remind ourselves that we don't make a distinction between two numbers that are congruent. And how do I add them? The very cool thing is we're able to just take the representatives, the ordinary integers that we use to write them, add them as ordinary integers, and then just put the bar over it that says, hey, just remember this is really representing something in z mod n. Um, similarly for multiplication, when we define the product of two things in z mod n, we just take the ordinary product and then we reduce mod n. It's what we've been doing since 7.1, just in a very elegant notation that is really powerful the more advanced you get. So maybe we could do exponents that way. Okay, so here's the, here's the deal. Here's the way the problem is written. Let n be a natural number. That's going to be the mod we're working in. So we, for any two numbers, uh, any two elements of z mod n, then we are going to propose to define an operation of taking one of those um, to the power of the other, where they're both in z mod n, and that's, that's important here. Um, we'll contrast that at the end of the video with another possible situation. And we're going to do the same idea, okay? So um, we're going to take a bar to the b bar by taking the ordinary integer a to the ordinary integer b in the ordinary way, and then taking the bar of that, okay? But the question is, is that well-defined? There was something that we actually had to prove to make sure that these definitions actually made sense. And this is gonna be different. So I'm just gonna do an example. Let's let n equals three. I didn't wanna do n equals two because it may be a little too simple. Uh, but I'll try to do simple numbers otherwise. Let's take two bar to the two bar using this definition. So here's the idea. You just say, okay, I'm going to take the ordinary integer 2. I'm going to raise it to the ordinary integer 2. And then at the end, I'm just going to reduce mod 3. Okay, so 2 to the 2 is 4. I reduce mod 3. We could just stop with 4 bar. That's a totally legal element, a totally legal way to write an element of, of z mod 3. But it might be nice to get the simplest possible representation. And, of course, 4 is congruent to 1 modulo 3, so we can write it as 1 bar. Okay, so here's the problem, though. Somebody else comes along and says, okay, I want to write that exponent as five bar. That's the same exact element of z mod three. It's just a different way to write it. But when we use the definition that we're trying to use for this new exponent operation, we actually use the five that's written on the page. We take two to the fifth, and then we're supposed to reduce mod three. Well, that's 32 reduce mod three ah, now we have a problem. When we reduce that and we put it in simplest form, that's two bar, that's congruent to two mod three. That is really different from one, okay? So the answer here is no, it's not well-defined. So you can't just write things like this down and assume they're going to make sense. When you're looking at modulo stuff, you're always taking some honest element of z mod 3, like 2 bar, and very often you are choosing, making a choice of how to represent it. Like, hey, I could write it as 2 bar or 5 bar. And nothing we do ha can depend on that choice. And if you propose a definition that actually does depend on the choice, is just not a meaningful definition at all. It's not just a weird operation. It just doesn't even define an operation at all. Okay. Now, this might surprise you if you've looked ahead in the chapter titles, um, and it says, chapter nine, our very last chapter, is called Exponents Modulo N. Well, here's the deal. We are going to define something where we take an element of z mod N and raise it to an ordinary integer. And it's gonna be exactly what you expect. So for example, a bar to the three is just, let me copy and paste that, is just a bar times a bar times a bar. Just, it really means what it, what it usually means. 
But notice, I'm not thinking of this as an element of z mod n. That actually has to be an honest-to-god integer, a real uh, integer that's not interpreted with a mod, um, or else this definition isn't going to work. Okay? There's some interesting things to say about modular exponentiation and about patterns of repetition in the exponents, but they're not just this proposal for a definition. Okay? I know this is probably the most subtle, one of the most subtle things, but I wanted to make sure I gave one more example besides the, the one in the book that they give of an attempt at an operation and seeing that that isn't always well-defined.